you spent a lot of your childhood with your grandfather on a ranch here in Texas. Mm -hmm. And I heard you had a, a lot of work to do around the ranch. So what's the coolest job you remember doing there? Wow, coolest. Um, most interesting, <laughs> most memorable. Most memorable. Most impactful. I mean, it was a, it was real, it's a real working ranch. Um, my And I, I spent all my summers on that ranch from age four to 16. And my grandfather was really taking me those in the summers, in the, in the early summers, he was letting me pretend to help on the ranch because, of course, a four-year-old is a burden, not a help in real life. He's really just watching me and taking care of me. Um, and he was doing that because my mom was so young. She had me when she was 17. And so he was sort of giving her a break. And my grandmother and my grandfather would take me for these summers. But as I got a little older, I actually was helpful on the ranch. And I loved it. I was out there. Like, my grandfather had a huge influence on me huge factor in my life i did all the jobs you would do on a ranch i've fixed windmills and laid fences and pipelines and you know done all the things that any rancher would do vaccinated the animals everything um and, but we had a you know my grandfather after my grandmother died um, i was about 12 and i kept coming to the ranch so it was then it was just him and me just the two of us and he was completely addicted to the soap opera, The Days of Our Lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we would go back to the ranch house every day around 1 p.m. or so to watch Days of Our Lives. Uh, like sands through an hourglass. So are the days of our lives. Just the image of that, the two of us sitting there <laughs> watching a soap he, opera. He had ranchers. these big crazy dogs. It was really a very formative experience for me. But the key thing about it, for me, the th the great gift I got from it was that my grandfather was so resourceful. You know, he did everything himself. He made his own veterinary tools. He would make needles to suture the cattle up with. Like he would find a little piece of wire and heat it up and pound it thin and drill a hole in it and sharpen it. So, you know, you learn different things um, on a ranch than you would learn, you know, growing up in a city. So self-reliance. Yeah. Like figuring out that you can solve problems with enough persistence and ingenuity and my grandfather bought a d6 bulldozer which is a big bulldozer and he got it for like five thousand dollars because it was completely broken down it was like a 1955 caterpillar d6 bulldozer knew it would have cost i don't know more than a hundred thousand dollars and we spent an entire summer fixing like repairing that bulldozer and we'd you know use mail order to to buy big gears for the transmission and they'd show up, they'd be too heavy to move. So we'd have to build a crane, you know, just that kind of, kind of that problem solving mentality. Um, he had it so powerfully, you know, he, he did all of his own. Uh, he just, he, he didn't pick up the phone and call somebody. He would figure it out on his own. He doing his own veterinary work, you know, but just the image of the two of you fixing a D six bulldozer and then going in for a little break. At 1 p.m. to watch soap opera. Life. Laying on the floor. That's how he watched TV. Yeah. He was a really, really remarkable guy. That's how I imagine Clint Eastwood also. <laughs> in all those Westerns. When he's when he's not doing what he's doing, he's just watching soap operas. 